Welcome to Imbalance Classification Masterclass in Python. Classification predictive modeling is the task of assigning a label to an example. Imbalance classification are those classification tasks where the distribution of examples across the classes is not equal. Often, the class distribution is severely skewed so that for each example in the minority class, there may be one or even hundreds of thousands of examples in the majority class. Practical imbalance classification requires a use of a suite of specialized techniques, data preparation techniques, learning models, and performance metrics. In this course, you're going to learn the techniques for imbalance classification, written in a real-world manner, with concrete and executable examples in Python. Thanks for your interest in this masterclass in imbalance classification. Now let's get started. All right, in this lesson, let's talk about the outcomes. What are you going to learn in this course? This course is going to teach you the techniques for imbalance classification you need to know as a machine learning practitioner. Here are a few high-level things you're going to learn in the course. You're going to learn how to choose an appropriate performance metric for evaluating models for imbalanced classification problems. You're going to learn how to appropriately stratify an imbalanced data set when split it into training and testing sets, and then when using k-fold cross-validation. You're also going to learn how to use data sampling algorithms like SMOTE to transform the training data set from an imbalanced data set when fitting a range of standard machine learning models. You're also going to learn how algorithms from the field of cost-sensitive learning can be used for imbalanced classification. You're also going to learn how to use modified versions of the standard algorithms, like SVM and decision trees, to take the class weighting into account. You're going to learn how to tune the threshold when interpreting predicting models and class labels. Now, these are just a few high-level things, but it does give you some insight into what we're going to cover in this course. All right, let's talk a little bit about the course structure. The course was designed around the major imbalanced classification techniques that are directly relevant to real-world problems. There are a lot of things you need to learn about imbalanced classification, from theory to abstract concepts to APIs. The goal is to take you straight into developing an intuition for the elements you must understand with laser-focused examples. The lessons in the tutorials were designed to focus on how to get results with imbalanced classification methods. Therefore, the lessons give you the tools to both rapidly understand and apply each machine learning technique or operation. There's going to be a mixture of both tutorial lessons and projects to both introduce you to the methods and give plenty of examples and opportunities to practice them. So we've got six core parts to the course. We have the foundation, discover a general introduction to the field of imbalanced classification, the intuition for skewed class distributions, and the properties of data sets that make these problems challenging. Part two, model evaluation. Discover the failures of classification accuracy for skewed class distributions and alternative performance metrics such as precision recall, area under the rock curves, and probability scoring methods. Part three, data sampling. Discover techniques for transforming the training data set to balance the class distributions, including data oversampling, undersampling, and a combination of these techniques. Part four, cost sensitivity. Discover modified versions of machine learning models that allow different types of misclassification errors to have different costs on the model's performance. Part five, advanced algorithms. Discover advanced models for interpreting and calibrating predictive probabilities for imbalanced classification, as well as how to use ensemble algorithms and techniques from the field of anomaly detection. And then lastly, we're going to have projects. Discover how to put these techniques from imbalanced classification into practice with end-to-end -end projects on real data sets that have skewed class distributions. Each part of the course targets learning outcomes, and so do the lessons within each part. Hello and welcome back. All right, let's start talking about imbalanced classification. Classification predictive modeling involves predicting a class label for a given observation. An imbalanced classification problem is an example of a classification problem where the distribution of examples across the known classes is not equal. The distribution can vary from a slight bias to a severe imbalance, where there is one example in the minority class for hundreds, thousands, or millions of examples in the majority class. Imbalanced classification poses a challenge for predictive modeling problems because most machine learning algorithms used for classification were designed around the assumption of an equal number of examples for each class. This results in a model having poor predictive performance, specifically for the minority class. This is a problem because typically the minority class is important and therefore the problem is more sensitive to classification errors for the minority class than for the majority of class. All right, so in this lesson and the next few, you're going to discover imbalanced classification predictive modeling. We're going to do five things. Firstly, we're going to talk about classification predictive modeling. Secondly, we're going to talk about imbalanced classification problems. Thirdly, we're going to talk about the causes of class imbalance. 
Fourthly, we're going to talk about the challenge of imbalanced classification. And lastly, we're going to look at some examples of imbalanced classification. We've mentioned already that classification is a predictive modeling problem that involves assigning a class label to each observation. All right, let's take a look at a real world example. This is a very famous example for machine learning. We collect measurements of a flower and classify the species of a flower, the label, from the measurements. The number of classes for a predictive modeling problem is typically fixed when the problem is framed or described. All right, using our flowers example, given the measurements of the flower, the observation, we may predict the likelihood, which is the probability, of the flower being an example of each of the 20 different species of flowers. The number of classes for a predictive modeling problem is typically fixed when the problem is framed or described. And usually, the number of classes does not change. A classification predictive modeling problem may have two class labels. This is the simplest type of classification problem, and it's referred to as a two-class classification problem or a binary classifier. Alternatively, the problem may have more than two classes, such as three or ten or even hundreds of classes. These types of classifications are called multi-class classification problems. When working on classification predictive modeling problems, we must collect a training data set. A training data set is a number of examples from the domain that include both the input data, the measurements, and the output data, the class label. Depending on the complexity of the problem, the types of models we may choose to use, we may need tens, hundreds, or thousands, or even millions of examples from the domain that constitute a training data set. The training data set is used to better understand the input data to help best prepare it for modeling. It's also used to evaluate a suite of different models. It's also used to tune the hyperparameters of a chosen model. And lastly, the training data set is used to train the final model on all the available data that we can use in the future to make predictions for new examples of the problem domain. All right, so now we're familiar with classification predictive modeling. Let's consider an imbalance of classes in the training data set. All right, let's talk about some of the causes of class imbalance. The imbalance of a class distribution in an imbalance classification predictive modeling problem can have many causes. There are perhaps two main groups of causes for imbalance we may want to consider. They are data sampling and the properties of the domain. It's possible that the imbalance in the example across the classes was caused by the way the examples were collected or sampled from the problem domain. This might involve biases introduced during data collection and errors made during data collection. For example, bias sampling and measurement errors. For example, perhaps examples were collected from a narrow geographical region or a slice of time, and the distribution of classes may be quite different or perhaps even collected in a different way. Errors may have been introduced when collecting the observations. One type of error might have been applying the wrong class label to many of the examples. Alternatively, the process or systems for which the examples were collected may have been damaged or impaired to cause the class imbalance. Often in cases where the imbalance is caused by sampling bias or measurement error, the imbalance can be corrected by improved resampling methods or by correcting that measurement error. This is because the training data set is not a fair representation of the problem domain that's being addressed. The imbalance might be a property of the problem domain. For example, natural occurrence or the presence of one class may dominate other classes. This may be because the process that generates one class is more expensive in time, cost, computation, or other resources. It's often feasible or intractable to simply collect more samples from the domain in order to improve the class distribution. Instead, a model is required to learn the difference between the classes. So now that we're familiar with some possible causes of class imbalance, next up we're going to consider why imbalanced classification problems are challenging. All right, now let's talk about the challenge of imbalanced classification. The imbalance of a class distribution will vary across problems. A classification problem may be a little skewed, for example, a slight imbalance. Alternatively, the classification problem may have a severe imbalance, where there might be hundreds or even thousands of examples in one class and tens of examples in another class for a given training data set. So we've kind of got two measurements here. We've got a slight imbalance and we've got a severe imbalance. So an imbalance that is slight is a classification problem where the distribution of examples is uneven by a small amount in the training data set. For example, a four to six ratio. A severe imbalance is an imbalance classification problem where the distribution of examples is uneven by large amounts of the training data set, say one to a hundred or more. A slight imbalance is often not a concern, and the problem can often be treated by a normal classification predictive modeling problem. A severe imbalance of the classes can be challenging to a model and may require the use of specialized techniques. The class or classes with abundant examples are called the majority class or the major class, whereas the class with few examples 
and there is typically just one, is called the minority or the minority classes. When working with imbalanced classification problems, the minority class is typically of the most interest. This means that the model skill is going to incorrectly predict the class label or the probability for the minority class is more important than the majority class or classes. The problem of imbalanced classification is not solved. It remains an open problem generally and practically can be identified and addressed specifically for each training data set. All right, so now that we have an idea of some of the challenges behind imbalanced classification, let's look at some common examples. All right, let's take a look at a few examples of imbalanced classification. Many of the classification predictive modeling problems that we're interested in solving are in practice imbalanced. Therefore, it's surprising that imbalanced classification doesn't get more attention than it does. Let's list out some examples of the problem domains where the distribution of examples is inherently imbalanced. Many classification problems have a severe imbalance in the class distribution. Nevertheless, looking at common problem domains that are inherently imbalanced will make the ideas and the challenges of class imbalance concrete. There's imbalance in fraud detection, claim prediction, churn prediction, spam detection, anomaly detection, outlier detection, intrusion detection, conversion prediction. The list examples sheds light on the nature of imbalanced classification predictive modeling problems. Each of these problem domains represents an entire field of study, where specific problems from each domain can be framed and explored as imbalanced classification predictive modeling. This highlights the multidisciplinary nature of class imbalanced classification and why it's so important for machine learning practitioners to be aware of the problem and the problem of addressing it. Notice that most, if not all of our examples, are likely binary classification problems. Notice too that examples from the minority classes are rare, extreme, abnormal, and unusual in some way. Also notice that many of the domains are described as detection, highlighting the desire to discover the minority class amongst the abundant examples in the majority class. All right, so now that we have a robust overview of imbalanced classification predictive modeling, let's start looking at some code. 